This is example number 2169 and we will work with Coulomb damping. We have here a single degree of freedom system that consists of a mass of 20 kg and a spring of 4,000 newtons of the meter. We have an experimental font that indicates that the amplitudes of consecutive cycles are found to be 50, 45, 40, 35 millimeters. And with that data, we want to determine the natural frequency and the damping force and the frequency of the damped vibration. We like to calculate the number of cycles before it stops and the time elapsed until it stops. The first thing we will analyze is the nature of the damping. We analyze how the amplitude decreases. So we see that here we have the initial amplitude is 50 millimeters, then 45, 40, and 35 in each cycle respectively. So if we write the difference between the first cycle and the initial condition, so we have 50 minus 45, this is 5 millimeters. And then we have the second amplitude with the third amplitude and we have 45 minus 40 and then we have successive cycles we see that the reduction in amplitude is, is constant therefore we can conclude that the damping is dry friction or column damping remember that if we will compare this to viscous damping the viscous damping system have a reduction in amplitude, which is exponential. We have a, an equation that relates those amplitudes. The amplitude in one cycle will be the amplitude in the previous cycle minus 4 mu, mu being the coefficient of friction times the normal, divided by the constant of the spring. Since we know that this is a column damping system or a system that is subjected to dry friction, the system vibrates at its natural frequency. The natural frequency is defined as the square root of the constant of the spring divided by the mass, which is equal to 4,000 divided by 20, square root of that, give me a natural frequency of 14.5. 1421 radians per second. So we were able to find the nature of the damping and the magnitude of the frequency. We do not have damped frequency because a system that is subjected to dry friction vibrates at its natural frequency. Let's find the damping force. Is the force of the dry friction coefficient, which is mu, times the normal. You remember that's the force of friction when we have dry friction. Solve it for the equations that we have here above. We can substitute the values and we get that this is 5 millimeters, which is 5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters times 400, which is the constant of the spring, divided by 4. That gives me the friction force, which is 5 newtons. With this equation, we can also find the friction coefficient because we know that the normal force is equal to the weight. The weight is the mass times the gravity. And then we calculate the friction coefficient, which is equal to 0 0.0 255. To calculate the number of cycles before the system stops, we will use the following equation. Please look at the theory, and this will be equals to the initial amplitude minus mu times n divided by k, all that divided by 4 mu n over k. This formula comes from that the force of the spring 
has to be bigger than mu times n in order to overcome that force, right? So we can say the displacement is less than mu times n over k, the system stops. So we calculate mu n over k, and that gives me 0 0.025. I'm using more decimals than the ones that I wrote in the result. And times 20 times 9.81 divided by 4,000. That gives me a value of 0 0.00125. I will plug this number to find the number of cycles, and that gives me 50 times 10 to the negative 3 minus 0 0.00125 divided by 4 times 0 0.0125. And that is equals to 9.75. That means that the system stopped before the 10th cycle. Now let's find the time required to get to these uh, 9.75 cycles. The time to complete one cycle is, we will get it from the formula from natural frequency. Natural frequency is 2 pi over that time to complete the cycle, which is called period, and the period will be equal to 2 pi over omega n. 2 pi, and we calculated the omega n, which is 14.14. .14 Two, and that gives me that each cycle is completed in 0 0.444 seconds. So the time to complete the motion or to stop will be the time of each cycle multiplied by 9.75. The system requires then 4.33 seconds to come to a complete stop. This is the solution of this problem, and we were able to calculate the nature of the motion, the natural frequency, the friction coefficient, the numbers of cycles before it stopped, and the time required the system to stop.